Hi right, friends, I'm Colonel Fayer and this is Get Back to Work, a series in which uh, I do a work simulator and talk about stuff and things that have been suggested to me via the wizio.com slash colonel underscore failure. I'm not taking your requests at the moment, just in case you were your halfway fancy doing one yourself. No, that's not a thing that's currently occurring. Um, but we're playing Euro Truck Simulator today and uh, the request comes in from Devin uh, who asked that I play American Truck Simulator or if uh, if I was already engaged in a bit of Euro Truck, that would do. And I've gone the wrong way. That's what you get when you follow the sat nav. Do 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 do. The sat nav was full of lies, and I followed it anyway. So I'm having to reverse as my opening chuffing gambit. I'm relatively certain I've got the right trailer on, you know. Uh, it just I just went quick job. I went, job, quick, go, go, go. Go, 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 quick job. Yeah. What's your next startling plan here? Uh, haven't really got one, uh, but I'll back this up for as long as it's safe to do so. And then we'll, we'll try going forwards and see what that can accomplish. Okay, all right. Yeah, I think you're probably going to be... Reaching, reaching about max Q there. All right, okay. Put me back in the room. Slap it in first, and uh, let's go right, since uh, straight ahead was clearly a non-starter. Yeah, let's have, let's have a quick look around. Where the heck am I going? How do I get out of this stupid yard? That's the problem with, with being started in a stupid yard, is you've no idea which way's out. I think my out might be over there. Yeah, look, they've got one of those little barrier efforts. Groovy. Okay, cool. Right, uh, Devon is our question master of the day. And uh, he's kept it relatively simple. So uh, so we'll get in there. Uh, and he goes, uh, recommend a recent TV show that you think is great. Uh, I'm old, so by recent TV show, I mean anything from the last 20 years. That feels recent-ish. I completely agree with you. Completely agree with you. Uh, uh, let's, let's tick off the you must have seen already. Uh, list to start with and uh, and you must have seen already uh, the wire um, which is uh, which is just superb uh, so much edge of the seat stuff in the wire is just just not even funny um, uh, the West Wing now depends on that some of that will depend on your political orientation why is this truck going so slowly I guess it was rev limited or some such Look, I've got the I've got the throttle flipping buried here. We should be, uh, yeah. Why are we Why are we going at such a lackluster speed? Hold on, I've got to get I've got to get a grip on things. Uh, no, and the reason that I say that the the West Wing it's going to depend on your political persuasion is because I've had I've had a couple of incidences of, of people going, no, the West Wing's a load of old rubbish. Uh, if they're you know if they're staunch Republicans, right? And uh, and that's fine. Look, if it if it goes against your uh, uh, your your fervent affiliation, that's all good. But the writing's just great. The characters are great. Um, and uh, insofar as giving you an understanding of how the American political system works, it's probably one of the uh, uh, one of the best tutorials for international viewers that you can get your hands on. Um, Martin Sheen's just great in it. In fact, the entire cast is is phenomenal. Um, but it's light and it's fluffy and it's uh, and it's you know it's got uh, it's got plenty of the old liberal values there at its core, and so therefore it might not be for you. So let's uh, let's let's skip on past that. Now I'm gonna I'm gonna assume uh, that you are uh, a science fiction fan, right? Because if if you're not, <laughs> You've come to the wrong dojo, uh, because top of the tree, King Monkey is uh, the Expanse, um, which is available on the Amazon Primes. Um, the Expanse is magnificent. You'll watch the first couple of episodes and go, "Yeah, yeah I'm not so, not so sure about it." But uh, the books are great, right? I, I, I read the books after read, after watching the series, and the books are different. The story's not exactly the same, but it's it's similar enough 
that you kind of go, oh yeah, 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 oh. and, and you'll kind of go like, you know what, the books are great, but I really appreciate the changes that they made to make it, you know, possible to be shown on a, on a small screen. Um, the cast you might not get on with to start with, but over time you most definitely will. Put me in a gear that actually flip and goes somewhere, would you? That's it, come on, thump it. That's more like it. Yeah, seventh gear, that's what I'm about. All right, what speed are we supposed to be doing? I don't know, but you're only doing 25, so, you know, hoof it. There you go, we're into a, we're into a 50. All right, give me something like 10th. Let's, let's abuse some of that talk. What are we carrying? We're carrying some kind of noxious chemical from Grimsby out of Manchester, uh, which shouldn't take us very long at all. Uh, well, I'm hoping it won't take us very long at all. I, I, might, I might need to do a little bit of two-lane driving here, uh, but that's okay, because I plan on playing it very fast and loose vis-a-vis -vis the speed limit, uh, and that'll be, that'll be good. Ah, national speed limit, dual carriageway. That's uh, 70 miles an hour in a car, 60 miles an hour in a truck. Yeah, I'm going to do whatever I can get a truck up to. Uh, no, The Expanse is fantastic. The last two seasons, maybe not quite as good, but still good enough to watch. Uh, the last season, it's very obvious they rushed it. They did, the last season really didn't do it justice. Um, but other than that, what are you going to do? Uh, now, if you're... Uh, I'm going backwards again. Um, if you're a tech nerd in any fashion at all, then uh, Silicon Valley is magnificent uh absolutely magnificent um and from the, the first series that they, they absolutely get it they they completely get what it's like to work for an american tech company and i am blessed in that i've worked for two big american tech companies and they also get uh what it's like working for a startup and i've worked for startups as well uh, I've never been lucky enough to work for an overfunded startup. That that joy still awaits me, and maybe I'll do it at some point, and maybe I won't. Where they've got more money than sense, and they're not really making anything of any value. But Silicon Valley is very funny, um, and very very well observed. Uh, from about the third season onwards, one of the writers is uh, Dan Lyons. I'm going to say. I think that's his name, and he wrote a book called Disrupted um, about his experience, I've mentioned it before, but it's his experience as a 50-something tech journalist going to work for a startup. And startups, the, uh, the, the standard startup mantra is uh, hire 22-year-olds, pay them 22k a year, and work them 22 hours a day. And so he's, you know, he's the former tech editor for Newsweek and uh, and he finds himself working at a tech startup and it's hilarious it is so funny but he, uh, the, the book I cannot recommend the book highly enough the audio book is particularly good because he's the one reading it so he gets all the inflections exactly where he wants them um, but it's it's hilarious and horrifying at the same time uh, the this cult of tech that we've got going on um, uh, but he ends up uh, writing for uh, uh, for Silicon Valley, and uh, and you know you just and, and the authenticity in his experiences is obvious. Uh, so that's yeah, that just very very funny series. Um, now, if you get a chance, uh, you should watch while we're on comedies. You should watch the Detectorists. Um, the Detectorists, it's British. So it's, uh, it's a BBC job. You might be able to get it somewhere. I don't know, internationally. Um, but The Detectorist is so gentle. The humour in it is just so gentle. Uh, but it's about a bunch of, uh, uh, of fellas who, uh, who do metal detecting as a hobby. And, you know, and, you know they're really nerdy about it. But it's, uh, it never takes the mickey out of them. Um, it does, but in a uh, in a way that uh, that you know proper because they don't like being called meta de metal detectors, uh, they like being called meta they like being called detectorists. Hence the uh, hence the name of the show. It is absolutely wonderful. Um, it's just so lovely, such a lovely lovely show, uh, and uh, yeah, and so therefore that one's on my that one's on my recommendation list. 
Right, I'm now going to move into a block of suggestions uh, that are pertinent to this year because they are on their ongoing series, even though they're all on hiatus at the moment. Um, shortly after herself passed away this year, uh, there were several series that we'd both been watching that, that came back. Uh, we had The Boys, uh, Stranger Things, uh, and Umbrella Academy, and they all had their new series kind of rock up at a similar kind of time. And without exception, they were all great TV. Just great television. Um, the Boys is going to be a bit of a Marmite choice, and it's the weakest of the three, in my opinion. Um, the, 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 the main problem with The Boys is that they often sacrifice good storylines in favour of shock tactics. Um, but the initial premise is a good one. The second season's so-so. The third season's better than the second season. The first season's good. Uh, the second season's alright. Um, and the third season was good again. Um, when it's good, it's very good. When it's less good, it's, uh, it's, it's less good. The basic premise of it is that uh, the boys in question are led by Carl Urban. And who doesn't like Carl? Herself had a flipping crush on Carl Urban. Second only to a crush on Chris Hemsworth. I don't know what it is about, uh, about Australians that she found appealing. Uh, always used to be... Always used to be cowboys. Yeah, she was, used to have a thing for cowboys, and I, uh, you know, but hey, she every time she used to come back from the States, she'd be just like, uh, uh, oh, I, 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 I met so-and-so who we work with. This is a genuine conversation that we had. Uh, she'd come back from an away mission to uh, the San Francisco uh, wing of, of EA while we both both worked there. And, uh, and she said, oh, I finally met so-and-so. I go, oh yeah, what's he like? Because we both got on with him because he was a good, he was a good bloke, good laugh. And she goes, well, he's he's a bit like a, a Texan surfer, fireman, cowboy. And you kind of go, oh really? She goes, yeah, that was nice. <laughs> uh, uh, and yes, yeah, she, she had a very definite type, and somehow ended up with me. Um, uh, but yeah, no, uh, the the boys' uh, uh, premise is that Carl Urban. Uh, is hunting down or putting out a commission superheroes. Him and his him and his team are putting out a commission superheroes. Superheroes, meanwhile, and this is far more realistic than anything you'll ever see from Marvel or DC. Um, uh, superheroes are owned by a corporation, and therefore it's all about ad deals and the TV series that they're currently making and getting fans on board and all of their social media numbers and all of that kind of stuff. It is incredibly cynical, and um, uh, and you know, very very well observed. And there's some properly good stuff in there as well. In the third season, um, the the corporation has opened a new theme park, and everything in that theme park is so painfully woke. It is the greatest. Uh, it is the. It is the the greatest piece of satire you could do on wokeism uh, without saying wokeism is stupid right uh, because the principles of wokeism are perfectly reasonable um, but just showing it taken to the nth degree it's hilarious they go yeah this theme park is just so well observed it's very very clever um, uh, yeah, yeah, so the boys, it's, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's, it can be homophobic, it can be racist, it can be sexist, it can be all those things, but it is doing so in a very well observed and satirical fashion, um, and uh, therefore gets a thumbs up from me. But that's the weakest of the three, nay four, I'm going to add one more in as well. Uh, second on the list, in terms of, uh, of good stuff that's on available at the moment, Stranger Things. Oh, I meant to look it up. Oh, bum. Um, Stranger Things is great. The first series was the best one. The second series was second best. This latest series... Actually, no, this latest series might be the second best one that they've done. Um, you know, it's about kids in the 80s fighting monsters. And what's not to like about that? Because it's nostalgic not because it's set in the 80s. It's nostalgic because those were the kinds of movies we got in the 80s. 
uh, you know, kids fighting monsters. It was groups of kids who were, who were fighting monsters. Um, and, you know, you go up to and include kind of um, uh, Back to the Future in that as well, which is about, you know, young people. And then you've got all of the... Uh, all of the Brat Pack movies, so like the Breakfast Club and stuff like that. Those were our, you know, those were the, the heroes we grew up with. Hang on, Jeff, I'll be a couple of minutes. No, no, it's not time. No, you're you're 90 minutes early, Jeff. No, I know you're hungry. He's trying to put on his winter coat, uh, which means he's eating everything that has a pulse. Uh, it comes to my house, the fish stop swimming. There you go. Um, uh, and, uh, yeah, and therefore it... You know, he wakes up, he goes, is it time to eat? And he just starts belly aching. He'll probably be in in a minute. Um, but I watched a... I'm pretty sure it was Steven Spielberg, but it might have been J.J. Abrams. And it's a movie from about ten years ago, and I can't remember what it's called. I thought it was called 8mm, uh, uh, but it's not called 8mm. That's a Nicolas Cage movie about snuff movies. Um, or some such. I don't think I've actually seen it, which is which is odd. Uh, but I know the reference because it was one of the movies available while I worked at Blockbuster. Um, anyway, this ki this kid's Jeff. Shush! I acknowledge your presence, small cat. However, I'm busy. You're just gonna have to. I just hit another truck. It's your fault, not my fault. Definitely not my fault. Um, this. This, uh, this Spielberg movie, Spielberg-esque movie, it's about a train that is full of monsters that derails and there's a bunch of kids who are in the process of making an amateur movie. Someone in the comments will name that movie. I can't remember what it's called. Um, but it was it was a classic 80s style movie and it was made in like 2010? I don't know, that's a guesstimate on my part, but it's, it, I mean, that's the right kind of ballpark. Um, what? Headlight usage offence? What the hell are you talking about? Since when has it been illegal to have my headlights off? Just... No, 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 not handbrake. I've got the headlights mapped to a button. I thought I had them in... I thought I had them dipped. What now? Crash vehicle offence. Oh, up yours. Flipping heck, this place has turned into a police state. Um... Ah, oh, dearie me. No, I'm moderately unimpressed. Thank you, Jeff. Yeah, that's... Yeah, you're, you're going to be helping. That's it. If you wouldn't mind... Yeah, it's a steering wheel, Jeff. I've got to do reversing in a moment, though. Uh, am I going in here? I'd like to know, but there's a cat in my face. Uh, yeah. That's... No, that's where we're going. All right, okay, good. Yeah. Put the indicators on. Yeah. No, Je Jeff, I don't know how stable that's going to be for you. I mean, you do you, baby, but... Uh, yeah, no, I, yeah, no, don't, don't nudge the mouse. That's, that's not part of what we contemplate as being helpful. Am I going to reverse this in? You knows it. Right, stop there. Press enter, and then uh, let's go for where you want it. Yeah, no, do the works. Yeah, thanks, Jeff. Stop nudging the mouse. Thank you. Don't, don't, uh, just sit. I'm, I'm doing stuff, Jeff. If you weren't deaf, you possibly could learn. Uh, of uh, of the signals to uh, to avoid, as as when not to to get stuck into the show. You you carry on though, um, right? Yeah. So, uh, and, uh, what was I talking about? What was I talking? I was talking about Stranger Things. Anyway, this uh, the, I think it was Spielberg, but it might have been J.J. Abrams. Uh, regardless, it it was the kind of movie I watched it and I went, you know what? If that had been released when I was a kid, it would probably have been my favourite movie. Because it absolutely nailed it. Completely nailed uh, the, uh, the experience of the wannabe creative uh, as a kid. <laughs> Excuse me, Jeff, I need the external camera. No, 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 you're good. No, you can... Oh, flipping Nora. Just... No, I had, I had a good... I had a good... Just... Not now, Jeffrey. Yeah. I love you, but get out of the way. Sit or leave. Either is fine. Both is preferable. Right, okay. If I put it in reverse, maybe it'll give me a different view. Ah, there we go. Right, now, I want to be able to wiggle my camera and see whether I'm actually flaming going. Yeah. Well, you're going back there. Ah, right. No, that's a good enough view. 
we want to be steering that way a little bit to avoid that truck trailer yes we do you're going to judge me on my uh, on my performance here jeff are you i think i possibly steered the wrong way here but let's find out everything about everything about reversing there's only one real rule go slow if you go slow you'll get it right if you go too fast you'll get it wrong right and this is about uh you know aim small miss small yeah aim big miss big or aim big miss small there's that knows that that's a that's a pillar oh dear okay do we want to be reversing the other side of the pillar i think we possibly do okay straighten up let's try that again only better all right okay right so if i if i come out this way all right and then we'll we'll work it around here to about there and straighten up as much as we can brakes i uh, used to see total ruddy pro all right and then you steer into it which is going to be hang on that that's it yeah yeah and then straighten it back up again that's it good slow is smooth smooth is fast bye jeff unless you found something else that i should possibly be paying attention to but it's not take time for another hour at least minimum all right good uh where was i yeah that would have been my favorite movie as a kid so stranger things the latest series was great uh it's fine um they did rather overuse kate bush's running up that hill it's a mighty mighty fine tune but they played it in every episode which to me says they're taking a backhander from Ms. Bush and her uh, her record company. I don't necessarily, you know, disapprove of that. Uh, I, I mean, they had to do it for to set up the story, but it's not the point. The, the point is it was rather belaboured, but I mean, I can forgive that because it's a good tune. Are we anywhere even remotely close to where we're supposed to be going? I don't know. I'm pulling it in line with this trailer here yeah but you, you've no idea if that's the right trailer or not what can we see i'll be honest not a lot can you give me a camera angle that's useful yeah ah that's that's useful right where are we going oh we're not far off okay pull it forward again and then uh, and then wiggle it around uh oddly enough it might be easiest to do this from inside the cab all right, I'll get, yeah, I know, Jeff. Huh? That surprises me as well. Um, all right, let's uh, let's go that way. Yeah, just uh, just enough to, to to make it make it feel like home. You were the right side of the pillars the first time. You just needed a little bit more wigglage, and I'm, I'm pretty sure they've put these pillars in here just to mess with you, just to just to make it awkward. Well, okay, I'm not 100% confident here, but we'll, we'll give it a try. Um, so yeah, Stranger Things just. It's just a, it's a good, uh, part nostalgic, um, but, uh, but well executed take on the past. And also I consider it the redemption of Ro Winona Ryder, who obviously needs, uh, uh, deserves redemption, uh, because, uh, I mean, actually I think she was redeemed in Alien 4. Uh, she was very good in, in Alien 4, um. I quite liked Alien 4, up to the reveal of the new Alien, which was completely awful. Um, the rest of it, though, Aliens versus Space Pirates, no, oh, that was great. And you'd got Brad Dorf as the, uh, Dorif, as the, uh, as the big bad, which is, you know, no one does, does, does mad quite as well as, uh, as Brad Dorf, except perhaps Gary Boosie, um... My son's not bad either, but uh, but Gary Boosie is the master. Let's face it, and that's probably because Gary Boosie actually is mad. But uh, I wouldn't want to say it to his face. Might be halfway tempted to go out for a beer with him. Um, yeah, because that would be an experience, wouldn't it? Yeah, right. Okay, let's, we're almost there. All right. Okay. So that brings me on to my uh, my penultimate suggestion, um, which is the Umbrella Academy. Uh, and the third season of the Umbrella Academy, I think, I think was was the best yet. Maybe, 
Um, I mean, the Umbrella Academy is great because, you know, the world's always ending and it's always their fault. Uh, it's superheroes again, but it's, a, it's an academy of, of kids who were basically abused by their superhero sponsoring father. Um, and so they're all screwed up. Uh, this, again, the, the, the last season of it was patchy. But this is just like bands, right? With, with a band, they, there, is the, uh, there is always the sense of the difficult second album. Um, and I guess in this golden age of television, you have the difficult second series. The first series kind of sets your, sets your stable out and... Uh, oh, come on. Oh, come on! Respond faster, dag -nam it! Oh, this has got to be close enough. It's got to be close enough. Ah, there you go. Hit it. Boom. Okay, got it done. Uh, yeah, the Umbrella Academy. Now it's, I mean, um, Umbrella Academy is very much a Marmite kind of a kind of a TV show. Uh, you either like it or you don't, and that's fine. What's up, Jeff? No, it's still not time. Um, and uh, uh, but if you if you've enjoyed it so far, this latest one's really good. Uh, yeah, I, uh, I very much enjoyed it. And obviously you had um, uh, Elliot Page, formerly Ellen Page, uh, who's, uh, who's gone through uh, gender transition. Uh, and uh, they handle it in the storyline really cleanly. There's no mess, no fuss, no long flipping heart rending any of this business. They just kind of go, right, that's done. Um, but they handle it really cleanly, which is very, very good. All right, my last recommendation is um, is a recent one, and it's Sandman. Um, Sandman's magnificent. I really, really enjoyed Sandman. Um, just excellent, just excellent television. Uh, it's a it's an odd one because it's from the graphic novel, and there are multiple stories in the in the graphic novels, so it feels like it should be one linear narrative, whereas it's not so much. It's the first half of the series is one story, and then you've got a whole bunch of one-shots that come afterwards. Uh, and it's Neil Gaiman, so obviously it's great. Uh, yeah, I love Neil Gaiman. I mean, anyone who doesn't love Neil Gaiman is, is just missing the Neil Gaiman gene. Um, but yeah, I mean, uh, Sandman was fantastic. The, the Sandman scoring, so the music score, was great fantastic particularly the use of a motif they used to denote when sandman's doing his business um and that's yeah no that was great i really really enjoyed it uh with the exception of jenna coleman because i don't like jenna coleman yeah she was a she was an assistant on doctor who around the same time as i stopped watching doctor who um and i'm sure she's a lovely person but unfortunately, she is the product of stage school. And some people can get away with being the product of a stage school. Others turn up as a genetic... A, 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 a genetic? A generic. Uh, a generic, identikit, uh, programmed emotion pod person coming out, of, um, uh, coming out of stage school. To the extent that... So if you're... We've spoken lately, or have I? No, I haven't put it out yet. No, this is coming before that. So I'm going to introduce to you the Wheel of Lunacy. Um, the Wheel of Lunacy, at the bottom, you've got neutral, right? Which is neither one thing or another. And then you have going, the, going in opposite directions around the Wheel of Lunacy until they meet again at the top, where you've got the extremes, the ultra extremes of either end, and they meet at the top, and it's hard to tell which, which extreme they've come up via. In the case of acting, you've got people who can't act on this side, uh, and then people who, uh, who, who have had uh, drama and acting training on this side. And when they reach the top, it's people who are so bad, you, you just kind of go, no, it's dreadful. Or, or people who are, who are just dreadful bad actors uh, versus people who are just dreadful trained actors and they both sit in exactly the same place and that's where jenna coleman sits can't act for toffee desperately unconvincing and it's gutting that she's in it um she's not in it too much she's in it just enough to be thoroughly annoying it's, it wasn't meant to be a drop in a diss track on jenna coleman i'm sure she's a perfectly lovely individual but uh just about as about as wooden as the timber section of b and q yeah 
Anyway, I've been Curl Failure Devon. Uh, hopefully there's something in there you like. If you don't watch anything else, watch The Expanse if you like sci-fi. Uh, watch The Wire if you haven't done already. What's wrong with you? Breaking Bad, right? Breaking Bad is phenomenal. But it's not as good if you binge watch it. Part of what made it great was you watched week to week and not an awful lot happened. And the same is true of its follow-up, which is Better Call Saul, uh, which, is, which is a prequel of sorts. Better Call Saul is better than Breaking Bad. Yeah. Yeah, I'll put that right out there. Um, there are so many hold-your-breath moments in Better Call Saul. It's incredible. Ignore the season that's got his brother in it. It's just annoying. Um, yeah, just it, it's just there to just hack you off the entire time. But the rest of it is fantastic. And the last couple of seasons are just great. Uh, really, really exploring what it is to make a TV show. There you go. Those are my recommendations. I've been Colonel Failure. Thanks for your request. I'll catch you next time. Cheerio.